first round of the Australian Open has finally, after all the fuss and a fight and a feud, and has kicked off. But all eyes are on the player who will never be on court there. Novak Djokovic is on his way home after being deported. But now an Australian government minister has confirmed that the immigration laws mean that he might not be playing at the tournament next year either. Well, the three-year ban uh, does apply and it will right. um, be in place, but it can be uh, it can be dealt with at some stage in the future, but that's very hypothetical and a long way off. Well, we're joined by Greg Rosetsky here in the studio and Martina Navratilova in Los Angeles. And good morning, morning. to you both. Um, Greg, as you came in, into the studio, I asked, has there actually been any tennis played at the Australian <laughs> Open? Because at the moment, we're just obsessed with what's happened to the guy who should have been defending his title. Well, this is pretty normal because you're talking about the world number one player. The media storm around everything, I think, could have been avoided had he been double vaccinated. We wouldn't be talking about this story. No. But also, you've got to put some blame to Tennis Australia as well as the Victorian government because they made an exemption rule out there. There are 26 people who applied for the exemption. Two players the week prior had been playing in Australia with that exemption and were allowed to play. Once Novak tweeted that, you know, I'm on my way to Australia and I've got the exemption, everything blew up. So you got to think, a guy's not going to get on a flight for 24 hours if he doesn't think he's going to be able to defend his title. So there's a lot of people at blame for the situation. So what's your reading of it then? What do you think, uh, at bottom, what happened there? Well, I think he got the exemption. Tennis Australia said you're going to be able to play. The Victorian government said you're going to be able to play, mm -hmm. but the government didn't like the situation. The and that rule, the, the, the rule for everybody was there. You have to be double vaxxed or you can't come in. Simple rule. Make it double vaccination or you can't compete in an event. Those weren't the rules. And that's why a lot of people felt this was a little bit unjust towards Novak. Ma well, Martina, sorry, after you. Well, I was going to say, Martina, I mean, you know, this is a distraction, isn't it, for everybody else who is playing in the Australian Open. But it is also a problem that presents itself to the organisers of the Roland Garros tournament, another Grand Slam event, of course, coming up in May. French government has been insistent on people getting vaccinated, so I wonder what the situation would be there if Novak Djokovic wants to play. And, of course, Wimbledon. Will he be allowed to play Wimbledon? As long as people quarantine, you can come into uh, the UK yep. unvaccinated. It's going to be a distraction at those events as well, isn't it? Well, yes, uh, and it, it all can be avoided, obviously, if Novak gets vaccinated. Even coming to America to play tournaments uh, on the, uh, in, in March in Indian Wells and in Miami, you're supposed to be vaccinated before you can get on a flight into U America. So it's just much more complicated than it needs to be. Granted, as Greg said, Novak, I think, did everything by the book, but the rules uh, were pretty clear that by the 10th of December, you need to ask for an exception. And he didn't do that. Uh, so there, there was plenty of blame to go around all, all, all the way around. But I think when he landed, they should have just said, you know what, we made a mistake giving you that visa. You're not allowed to come in. And that would have taken care of things because they, he should have never gotten the visa in the first place. But then everything kind of blew up and the players were really tired of talking about it. I think Tsitsipas even went into a press conference saying, I'll answer anything except about Novak. I'm done with it. Yeah. But uh, as far as traveling to other countries, we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, the French already said he can come in. But who knows? Uh, the rules keep changing as the as the virus keeps changing and and evolving and, and mutating. So who knows what will happen? The whole world has had to adapt to a whole new world, way of life. And getting vaccinated uh, for me, I'd be the first in line to get vaccinated, and I will get boosted the fourth time if yeah. if and when that con time comes. So Novak would just make everybody's life a lot easier if he got vaccinated. But most of all, I think he would set a much better example for the rest of the world. Well, of well. course, it would have made life easier for him had he been vaccinated. Greg here thinks that, looking at it in the round, he was rather unfairly treated. I, I, I sense that you think, basically, he got what he was asking for. To go to Australia and, and not be vaccinated was really walking into trouble. Oh, is this for me or Greg? Yeah, that's for you. That's, <laughs> sorry, that's for you, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, again, the timeline is weird because you're supposed to be double vax, which means three weeks in between vaccinations, which means he really needs to get started at the latest by 10th of December. So he gets vaccinated three weeks later and then he can go to Australia. And he didn't start checking to see if he was positive until the 15th, 16th of, of December, found out on the 17th. So 
Um, at that point, you can't get vaccinated because you have COVID. So it, it, the whole timeline just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and it doesn't seem like he wanted to get vaccinated. Maybe he was hoping he would get COVID and then he would get the exemption because of that. But it just doesn't really make sense from a from an athlete's point of view, because when you get COVID, you can get really, really sick, as Grigor Dimitrov got sick uh, a year and a half ago at the event that, that Novak put on. So you never know what, which way it's going to go. And it's like really playing Russian roulette with your body, much more so getting COVID than getting vaccinated. And if you get COVID, which are, you're less likely to get it, it's not going to be as bad. So for me as an athlete, I would be lining up for the vaccination just to protect my body. Greg, when he does appear at the next tournament, what's the reaction going to be? Or does it matter in which environment he plays in? I mean, one of the justifications that the Australian government gave for deporting him is that he would be this sort of idol of the anti-vax movement, and that was a threat to public health. Well, I, I don't actually believe that, because he has a tournament in Belgrade, and what he set up for all the players and the coaches was vaccinations. So he actually gave the players the choice of taking AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Medina at his event himself. His personal choice is, I don't want to get vaccinated. He hasn't made it public for months upon months going in, so he hasn't stifled or he hasn't riled people up to say, I'm a big anti-vaxxer, you shouldn't vaccinate. And on top of it, let's look at Australia. It's the most vaccinated place in the world. 93% of the population are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about 7% of their population. So I don't really buy that argument at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's his choice whether he wants to get vaccinated or not. And the rules are this. Simple. If there was no exemption, he wouldn't be allowed in. Yeah. There was an exemption, yeah. Yeah. and they made one for him. He wouldn't have got on the flight. Are you mates with him? Are you friends? Um, I've known Mo Novak since he's about 18 years of age, okay. and I work in the media, and I work for Prime Video and do the tennis coverage throughout the whole year. I'll take so that I, to I, yes, I, then. I, I, I spend a lot of time talking to him, but I separate myself with an honest opinion, and I like to look at this from not an emotional point of view, but what the rules yeah, are in the situation. Course. And those were the rules. But, but if you were to speak to him on the phone this week, say, have a yeah. good old chat with him, a private chat, would you say to him as a mate, get the jab, just get jabbed? Well, I, I think it's freedom of choice. I am double vaccinated. That is my personal mm. choice. It allows me to travel. It allows me to do things that I want to do around the world. With his job, obviously, certain countries are not going to allow him in. So it's going to be interesting to see the next coming events when he's going to be in America whether he's going to be allowed in and will he have the vaccination? I mean, the tournament at, at Indian Wells on March the 10th. Now, you've got to be fully vaccinated to try. I know this. I've just been there and come back again to, the, to travel to the US. You have to have proof that you've been double, at least double jabbed. Then there's the Miami Open a couple of weeks later. Same US rules would apply. Uh, you mentioned the French Open. Uh, it's a little bit vague what's happening in France at the moment, but they have just passed a law that says you have to show vaccination proof to go into a restaurant or to a sports event. So basically, his career this year could be sort of semi over if he doesn't get double jabbed. Well, this week, coming up at the Australian Open, if Zverev or Medvedev, he's not the number one player on the planet, even though he was by far the best player on the planet last year. Mm. So all these things are coming into place and whether he's going to stand up for what he believes. So from my point of view, if he doesn't get vaccinated, he will not be the best player on the planet and he might not be able to create history. Martina, can we turn our attention to uh, other players at the Australian Open and particularly Emma Raducanu? Mm. Um, so much pressure on her, she's a superstar, she's still very young. Can she mm. play and win? Look, she has done it at the US Open, but it's never been done before. What she has done was the fourth tournament, I believe, the year she ever played, or fifth, and, and she comes through and wins it. She has the least expectation as well as the most expectation, because if she plays like she did at the US Open, she can go deep into the draw. But since the US Open, she's played four tournaments, only won two matches. What do you think, Greg? I mean, the pressure on that kid is just absolutely immense. Is, do you think this might be, the, conversely, give, given that she, she did win the US Open, the toughest year of her career? This will, no question about it, be the most difficult year. Everything is new for her. All of a sudden, she goes from zero to superstardom, and she's done something in tennis no man or woman player have ever done in their second Grand Slam by winning it. So let's give her a little bit of time. I said it's going to be nine months 
to 18 months before she gets used to it. Can you imagine what the hype's going to be like this year at Wimbledon? Yeah. It is going to be bananas. I so heard a shot from the radio driving in this morning saying that she's got to win, otherwise everyone will call her a one-trick pony. <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? It's she, absolutely She has absurd. real talent. Oh, she's, she's amazing. You don't fluke a grand slam against the very best players on the planet. So let's give her a break. We don't say about England in the football. They haven't won the World Cup every year or the European <laughs> Championship. They're terrible. I mean, we're Good thrilled point. with how Gareth Southgate has done getting to the finals of the Euros. So yeah. let's put things in perspective. Yeah. All right, Greg. Thanks very much thank indeed. You. And uh, Martina, um, thank, can I, Martina, can I ask a question about the sure. bed, the bed behind you? Uh, oh, is it? You is it? Lulu? Yeah. <laughs> who who is on the bed? This is Lulu. Come on, Lulu, say hello. This is my uh, <laughs> travel companion, miniature dachshund. She's been to England. She's been to Wimbledon. Do you know uh, what, Martina? I thought that the bed was further away and it was a golden Me retriever. Me too. But actually, <laughs> I didn't realise that the perspective... It's a golden retriever with very short legs. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, what breed is she? What kind of dog is she? She's a miniature dachshund, long-haired, and actually the colour is called English cream. Go figure. Oh, can we just see her face again? Go on, just... just, 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 just... Oh, she's go. asleep. She said, don't bother me. Oh. Yeah. She's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we'll interview her. <laughs> Thanks, Martina. Right. Martina, thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. <laughs>